On this third section, we'll give a crash course in VPI programming with Python, with some scripts, examples, and tips to get the most performance out of it. VPI supports both Python 2.7 and 3.6, and has easy interoperability with NumPy and OpenCV. It is great for quick prototyping of image processing pipelines. Its API is inspired after the well-known Pillow image processing library, with added extensions to allow execution in different computing backends. As an example, the script shown here implements a simple edge detection pipeline. The input is read from disk on line 9 using Pillow and wrapped into a VPI image with the help of NumPy. Then, on lines 11 to 13, the image is converted to grayscale and then convolved with a 3x3 sub kernel defined at the top. All algorithms are executed by the CUDA backend. Finally, on line 15, the output is written back to disk using Pillow. So, as you can see here, this is as straightforward as it can be, and efficient too, especially when the core image processing is running inside a loop. Note, however, that Python support is currently released as a developer preview. This means that the API might change until it's production ready, although we are striving hard to keep the changes to a minimum. It also only supports one processing stream, meaning that the algorithm execution is always serialized, no matter on which backend it runs. Multi-stream processing is planned for the future production release. Let's see some details on how to create VPI images. New images can be created either by allocating a new one within defined contents or by wrapping an existing NumPy array. Allocating is quite easy, as shown in line 5 in the script in the slide. You just pass the image dimensions as width and height tuple, and then the image format, in this case RGB8. But you rarely need to allocate images like that. As we saw in the previous slide, output and other temporary buffers are allocated automatically by VPI to store algorithm results. Most commonly, users will wrap existing buffers to be used as input to VPI pipelines. For instance, line 8 creates a 512 by 256 NumPy array with three interleaved channels of uint 8 pixels. Line 9 will then get this buffer and wrap into a VPI an image. The image format is inferred by the array shape. In this case, it's an RGB8 image. The last bullet in the slide shows how other formats are deduced. When deducing isn't possible or not wanted, user can pass the format to the asImage function as a second parameter. Images with multiple planes can also be wrapped. Let's take, for instance, NV12 format with two planes, one with Luma and another with a subsample chroma. The corresponding NumPy arrays are created on line 16 and 17 and passed as a list uh, to the asImage function on line 18, together with the format, NV12 extended range. Although the memories are allocated on the heap, internally VPI will efficiently and transparently map it to the memory space used by the backend that accesses it. Creating VPI arrays and pyramids is similar. For allocating arrays, the user passes the array capacity and element type, as can be seen on line 5 on the slide. The array will be initially empty, that is, its size will be zero. Wrapping existing 1D NumPy arrays into a VPI array works similarly to wrapping an image, as can be seen on lines 8 and 9. The user passes the buffer to as array method, and optionally the element type. Element type can also be deduced from the NumPy array shape, as shown in the third bullet on the slide. Finally, pyramids. They are a collection of images, one for each level. To allocate a pyramid, the user passes its size format, number of levels, and optionally, its scale. It is currently not possible to wrap external pyramids. With the input memories created, it's time to call the algorithms on them. Most algorithms are methods of the input memory object. On line 5, for instance, the convert algorithm will read the input contents, convert the pixels format from RGB8 to U8, which is grayscale, and write the results to the output object returned. 
the backend used by an algorithm can be specified in two ways by explicitly passing the backend to the algorithm call like done on line 5 or by creating a Python context that has the backend enabled in it shown in line 8 with the Python's with directive. The backend becomes the default backend within this scope. This is especially useful if you have a sequence of algorithms that is being executed using the same backend. Algorithms called inside this context will use this backend where no backend is explicitly defined. On line 13, however, we want to use CUDA backend instead. Since it's still inside the context, we can explicitly define the backend for that call as an argument, which will override the default backend. The fact that the algorithm's return value is the result of the processing means that we can easily apply a sequence of operations to an image by using method composition. Here on lines 5 to 7, we convert the input from RGB8 to U8, then apply a 3 by 3 box filter, and finally rescale it to 1080p. The code will become quite compact and easy to read. All temporary memories are implicitly created by VPI or fetch from the internal object cache. The backend used is defined by the Python context on line 4, so all algorithms are going to be executed on CUDA. At the end, we have to somehow access the pipeline results. This can be done by locking the memory object, as shown on line 9 on both scripts. This operation will make sure that the processing started on line 6 is completed, and then map its contents to host memory. After that, the object CPU method can be invoked, which will return one or more NumPy arrays that act as a view to the buffer contents. These NumPy arrays can be read from or written to, with changes reflected back to the buffer's memory. The memory object is unlocked once the scope is closed. The CPU method can also be called outside the lock scope. In this case, the memory object is implicitly locked and then unlocked, with its contents copied to the output NumPy array. This array is not a view to the memory object. Writes to the return NumPy array will not be reflected back to the memory object. For efficiency reasons, it's advisable to always lock the array explicitly in order to access its contents. For images with only one plane, the CPU method will simply return one NumPy array, as shown on line 10 and 11 on the script to the left. When the image has more planes, a list of NumPy arrays is returned, one for each plane, as shown on lines 10 and 12 on the script to the right. Here the output is NV12, which has two planes. Data Y and data UV are a view to the image contents. Luma gets multiplied by 2, and U and V channels are both added 10. With VPI arrays, its CPU method simply returns a 1D NumPy array representing its contents. For VPI pyramids, a list of NumPy arrays is returned with one level per element. One aspect of VPI that has been overlooked is that although the algorithm processing appears to be executed immediately, it's actually not. Uh, every algorithm call returns immediately. The corresponding operation is scheduled to be run asynchronously to be finished at a later time. This is one of the reasons why execution can be efficient even though we're working with an interpreted language. This is also why lock operations must make sure that processing on the memory object is completed. Another reason for VPI's efficiency is due to its use of the internal object cache to avoid spurious memory allocations. Over time, memory buffers are automatically reused when previous work on them is guaranteed to be done and they are, are not referenced anymore. Almost all VPI algorithms are accessible via Python. To learn more about the syntax and how to use other algorithms, please refer to the online documentation. The slide shows some excerpts with how to use stereo disparity, Harris corner detection, and temporal noise reduction. VPI also comes with complete sample applications in Python that shows how to use the library. I recommend you to study and use them as a starting point for implementing your own image processing pipeline with VPI.